Oh, this is cool. Posh office, man. Oh, you are here. You know, you got a big old forest in front of your desk. People can't see if you're there or not. All right, welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I'm an old guy, gaming, and we are picking up right where we left off. I uh, literally saved the game uh, where we left off in the last episode and then uh, quit out the game and then loaded it back up. So we are now ready to continue on. And so Bozo uh, wants us to fly around this new structure that just kind of popped out of nowhere. Well, after we ignited the anomaly terror in space thingy with antimatter. And so he wants us to kind of fly around this thingy so he can get more readings. So that is where we are. These markings are not quite as alien as I would have expected from such an object. Could this be a top secret installation? Oh my. I do hope we haven't hijacked some distant Terran station. Why an unknown station? So he seems to think this is a Terran station. It kind of does look a little bit like their architecture. fly up to this thingy uh, I want to try something here zoom out a little bit let's try this view Us to build a dock. Okay, you need blueprints to build station modules. If you have the credits, you can buy blueprints from a faction representative. All right. Why is that still marked? Oh, that's where they want us to probably build the dock. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it does. It does very much look like. Uh, or at least it's reminiscent of Terran architecture. And maybe it is. I don't know. Because, like I said, I haven't gotten any further in this game. So everything here is brand new from here on out for me. Huh. Okay, let's go back over here. Oh. Wait a second. So I guess that's just marking the center of the of the the base. Here, what does it show? 
It just shows as an unknown station. Alright, well, I'm going to assume that'll stay marked. Well, you know, even if it doesn't, we still have our satellite here and our resource probe, which we never actually looked at. So we can always get back to it, you know, via the satellite. Okay, so I have a feeling like this is the uh, a point in this game that happens frequently where we kind of have to put the main storyline on hold and start building up our um, our resources and our finances in order to, to, to do the next part. So if we look at... What is all this stuff? Is this are these missions? Own stations, other stations. Oh no, these are other stations. Okay. Uh, we don't currently have any mission offers. Let's look at this again. Open a briefing. Okay, this doesn't really give us any more information. He said we had to get blueprints from station or faction representatives. So that means we should probably start working on faction rep. Um, if we look at... Okay, if we go to player information, factions and relations. Okay, so the Kach and the Xenon obviously are enemies, and I think I don't think we can change that. These guys are Paranid, and they're, they don't particularly like us. Uh, but we're plus five with with Argon and Antigone, uh, which are the two human factions. So it probably makes sense just to keep working, uh, especially since we're in Argon. Uh, at least, you know, maybe for this playthrough, or at least maybe for the first part of this playthrough, we should, um, you know, we'll, we'll just stick with Argon. But, you know, if we end up doing one of the DLC starts later on, we can start, you know, as a different race, in which case, you know, maybe we'll make the Argon our enemy or something. Uh, but for now, let's just stick with Argon because that seems to make the most sense for us. So what we need to do, that, that being the case, is we need to start doing missions for them and, and building our reputation with them. And to do that, we need to go back to Argon space. Um, if we go to the encyclopedia and we go to factions, um, the Argon Federation was founded by the descendants of Terran settlers cut off from their home system and stranded in deep space during the Terraformer Wars. The settlers colonized planet Argon Prime uh, is the Federation's heart and a cultural and industrial hotspot to this day. The Federation tries to maintain good relations with the other races if they deem these relations to be mutually beneficial. But ever since the gates shut down, diplomatic relations on all sides are deteriorating and conflicts such as, such as the war with the Holy Order of the Pontifex emerge. Okay. Uh, let's just read the other human faction. Um, We'll, we'll look at some of these others, too. I, I don't want to spend lots of time during these episodes looking at this, but we'll look at some of it. We're not going to completely ignore it, either, because it's part of the fun of this game. Um, and, if, you know, if some of you don't like, you know, me kind of reading through this stuff, you can always, you know, fast forward until the action starts again, too. Uh, all right, so the Antigone Republic is made up of representatives of several sectors that were cut off from the Argon Federation during the gate shutdown. The fledgling Republic was named after the system in which it resides, the system itself paying tribute to the Argon Station, whose loss is recorded in history as one of the greatest horrors of the Xenon Wars. While the Antigone Republic is a distinct entity detached from the Argon Federation, and they are wary of returning back into the Federation, they maintain close ties and cooperate on many levels. Sandwell, for example, is a planet of the Antigone Memorial System, which hosts the Argon Federation's biggest data archive. The Antigone Republic and the Argon Federation frequently conduct joint military operations to beat back Xenon invasions and they try and they trade freely and often. Okay. So they're buddies. Uh, they're also humans. And yeah, so that was cool. It kind of gave us a little bit of um, information there. So what is this? These must be the different 
ranks. Uh, no, these are licenses. Interesting. Okay. Argon General Use Equipment License. Minimum relation needed. Minus 10. So that probably is what you need to at least, like, say, dock at an Argon station. Secret Service Membership. Advanced Module License to buy some of their more, you know, advanced modules, stuff like that. Okay, cool. So yeah, like I said, we'll we'll look at this as we go along. Um, we won't. Earth scientists create. We won't go crazy with it, but uh, but we we won't completely ignore it either because I I just really like this stuff and I hope I hope you guys do too. Okay, so if we look at blueprints, uh, modules. All right, so build modules, storage modules, habitation modules, defense dock. So we. Okay, so according to this, we own the blueprint for a basic dock area. And then there's 13 more blueprints that we don't know. So, uh, so this means we know it, but we don't own a license for it, maybe? It says it's not owned. Hmm. Not sure about that. Okay. Well, Bozo said we had to we had to go talk to a faction representative to get a license. I thought that's what he said. Does it tell us that in the in the log? Oh, that was us. <laughs> I was going to say when did I lose a ship? That was us. Okay. <laughs> that was like, what the heck, man? We just lost a ship. Okay. So, no, I, I guess the quest... Huh. It doesn't, it doesn't tell us the last thing he said to us. So, okay. Well, uh, I think what we need to do, guys and gals and aliens of all races um, is we need to head back to Argon space but what I'm going to do is along the way I'm going to look for crystals on some of these asteroids and I'll probably cut the camera uh, un until and unless I find some and then of course if we find some I'll definitely um, bring you guys back at that point uh, but otherwise I will see you all in Argon space where we will start working on rep and see if we can figure out, you know, what we need to do to start working on the station. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, we have a, probably a cock. Oh, there's a whole cock patrol. Okay, uh, either that or those are pirates. And they are pursuing us. Or one of them is, anyways. Oh, that's a Xenon. In. We could probably take out a single in, as long as the, his buddies don't come with him. But let's let him chase us for a little bit until we get far enough away from his buddies so they don't show up and try and help him, too. Oh, he stopped pursuing us. Okay. That's fine with me. I, I do not want to get into combat in this ship if we don't have to. We we will definitely, trust me, we will be getting into combat later, but this is not the ship to be doing it in. Okay. But we should be seeing the highway. Yep, there's the highway right there. Oh, and there's a gate, too. Okay. I don't think we've... Yeah, we haven't uncovered that gate. So that's good. We'll see where this takes us. Entering system. Path to profit. It sounds like this is probably a Talati system. If it's called Path to Profit, it's a red system. Red star. 
Oh, look at the nebula over there. That's cool looking. Very neat. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this. Talani defense platform. Nice. All right, we're not going to do anything here for now, but at least we know of the sector, which is cool. All right, so let's head on back through. Entering system. Grand exchange. And we're going to hit the highway and head back up to Grand Exchange 3, I think it is, to get back over to Argon Space. Entering Grand Exchange 3. All right, let's take a look at our map. So yeah, we just need to get over to this jump gate here. Let's do it. You know what? I want to take a I want to take a quick look at this Pilati trading station. This is really cool. This ring station. Reminds me a little bit of Halo. Though it's not anywhere near as big as the rings in Halo. This is really cool looking. Let's go look at the this green section over here. Wow, that's cool. There's like a little town in there and there's a forest. their green space. Oh, that is so neat. I love it. Can we actually fly in there? Is that just a force field or is it no, we can't. Okay. We're hitting the station hall. Isn't that cool, though? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like a little waterway there. So neat. Okay. Yeah, I just love this kind of stuff. Um. All right. So the station... It's over here, I think. In the old game, they had a ring station, but it wasn't anything like this. It was just a kind of a ring. And you flew in through the center, and, I, and you had to kind of match yourself with the gravity, just like in some stations in Elite Dangerous, too. Oh, you know what, though? The center part here isn't actually spinning. As our ship scans each one of these sections, it's adding that type of module uh, to our database. Uh, oh, no, 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 sorry, wrong button. <laughs> um, oh yeah, this is very cool. Quite reminiscent of Elite Dangerous, the spinning station in Elite. You know what? Let's actually see if we can dock here for a second. Docking granted. Okay, so this will be right side up to us. What I want to do is I want to actually go 
to the trader uh, because when I was editing the last video and I made a note of this in the last video I figured out how we actually trade uh, the stuff that's in our own inventory okay let's get There's good. Twist this way just a hair. Back over there and then down. Wow, look at that rack of missiles over there. Successfully docked. Welcome. Hello. Okay, Captain Callie, go ahead and take a break. Uh, you can go take a break if you want to. Go have a beer or something. Don't, not too many beers, though. I might need you to drive later. Um, that's, <laughs> they just got these missiles sitting out here. How funny is that? Um, where does this go? Oh, just over to the other side. This is so neat. It, it's just, you know, this kind of stuff wasn't in X2 and X3. It was, it, they had started it with X uh, Reunion, but... I tried, guys. I really did try, and I just couldn't get into that game. You know, one of the things I really, really disliked about that game, and they, I don't know to what extent they changed it, but, um, habitat dark area. You, you, you could only fly like one ship for the whole, at least in the, the early rendition of the game, you can only fly one ship and you could upgrade the ship, but it was still just one ship. And they called it the skunk too, of all things, the Albion skunk. Um, and I so loved the ability in the previous games, you know, to, to purchase and fly and command a capital vessel, like a big carrier, a destroyer. And that really turned me off to, um, to reunion. Um, and they might have changed that later on. I'm not sure. Maybe mods changed it. But I think Ubisoft realized how important that was to those of us who loved their games. And so that's why they brought that ability to you know, purchase and, and fly capital vessels. Well, I think you could purchase them, but you couldn't fly them yourself. I don't know. Something there was something about it that I just really turned me off. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm yick, yickety yakking here. So let's go to. Is there any way we can go to the the ring? Oh, that would be so cool if we could go check out the ring. But it doesn't look like it. okay. We want to go to Trader's Corner. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's that guy's like landing up on to what to us is the ceiling but to him that's just the floor we're up on the ceiling to him so each each one of these sections is a separate habitat slash dock area so neat okay anyway let's talk to this dude can i help show me your there words you go. okay so our inventory is this little section here and we have Um, where is this? The, oh, yeah. Okay, so the trade wares. That's what we have. Okay. So, if this price is green-ish, that means it's it's in the, you know, in the positive. If it's yellow, I think that means it's, it's dropping from the average. And if it's red, it's really bad. So, since this is green and we need some money now... Um, let's go ahead and sell all of this to him. No, I think that means we're trying to buy it from him. We want to go this way. Yeah, right. Okay, so that so we're getting 21,000 by selling that to him. Um and that all we have to sell? I guess so. We don't want to sell the interface unit. We need that to talk to Bozo. We don't want to sell our repair laser. Didn't we get some other stuff though too? Hmm. I thought we did, but maybe not. Okay. Well, anyway, let's sell this magic lit, and we'll make another twenty-one thousand. Cool. Okay. And, um, here you go. I think that's all we need to do for now. Okay. Good profit to you. And to you, my friend. And to you. 
Let's look at this crafting station for a second. Security slicers. It's hard to read that text. Security decryption system and security bypass system. This all seems like kind of shady. Like stuff you'd do if you were like a pirate or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. We'll get it figured out, though. Okay, let's just go straight back to our ship. And um, if we tell Callie to fly somewhere, what do we do in the meantime? Uh, I know the one thing about the the ship that you did have in Albion Prelude, or not Albion Prelude, I'm sorry, um, Reunion, is it had different compartments, so it had like a crew quarter and things. If you, what does this do? Yeah. You have to assume there's, even though we might not be able to actually get to it on the game there, you have to assume there's got to be some kind of crew quarters uh, or, you know, another compartment somewhere on the ship. And that's probably where this, go, where she goes when we've taken control of the ship. Um, Just out of curiosity, though, let's do this. Let's go here. And no, not there. Let's go here. Still trying to get used to all this. Uh, go to property owned. Unknown station. It has a research module. Okay. Can we tell you to fly somewhere? Um, so what if we, can we tell her to fly to, well, even just to this Argon trading station? Fly and wait. Oh! There she goes! And I guess we just, hold on. <laughs> hold on! We're not even strapped in. Go easy on us, Callie. That's kind of cool, though. I didn't think it was going to let us do that. Oh, Callie, hello. Dang. Dang, girl. What are you doing? How many beers did you have? Okay. Oh, wow. This is cool, man. I thought, I didn't think we could have her fly with us as a passenger, but that is apparently the case. We need like a seat to sit down in, though. It doesn't, it's kind of weird that we would be standing up. What happens if I go here? No, we don't, <laughs> don't want to use a spacesuit. Okay, no, don't do that. There needs to be, there's, it's too bad there isn't a little compartment. Maybe there are in the larger ships. This is a really small ship, so perhaps that's what the deal is. Okay, well, anyway, I was doing that more kind of as an experiment than any other reason. But she is heading towards the jump gate. Okay, well, now we know, but hey, you know what, Callie? Sorry, I'm busy right now. Oh, oh, you're busy. <laughs> um, Can I help? Okay, let's uh, give seminar. Okay, does that... Let's try that. What does that do? Seminar for one star crew pilot. Excuse me. Piloting requires. Oh, we don't have the, the wear. Oh, that's neat, though. Okay, that's how I guess we level them up. I wonder, too, does she, does she gain skill over time just by flying? I hope that's the case. I don't remember what she had when we very first... Hired her. Entering system, black hole sun. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that and see if she, if this levels up. Okay. Um, more? Fire show ship details. Get up. Get up. There we go. Get up, please. Sorry. Didn't Can I help? Yeah, you go in the back and 
Wait, what? Sir? Yeah, you go in the back and relax, and I'll take over from here. Okay. So far, you guys, I am really enjoying this game. <laughs> I really am. Okay, let's see. Where are we at? We are in Black Hole Sun. That's the system we started out in. Um, Why don't we go ahead and go up to Argon Prime? And if I remember right... Now... <clears throat> Uh-oh. Don't we don't we have illegal goods? No, I guess we don't. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad we don't. I thought we had some illegal goods, but I guess we don't. Um ship information. Yeah, we don't have anything at all in our hold. Okay, we're good. Anyway, what I was saying was in the old game, uh, older games. Um you had Argon Prime, and then you had a place called Home of Light, and then south of Home of Light, there was the Ore Belt. And that might be a good place, if it's still set up that way, I don't know if it is or not. Uh, that might be a good place for us to go to look for crystals. Um, okay, anyway, let's um, head to this jump gate. The other thing we could do, though... This is a, it's like a super jump gate. Cause see, the other thing is, I don't remember Black Hole Sun being. Please halt. We will be scanning your inventory. Uh, close to Argon Prime. In the in the old map, Argon Prime was way to the west, and Black Hole Sun was kind of more Here in the go. center the of the of the map, with many many sectors in between. So they must have changed the arrangement of this, I think. But it's because the jump gates got shut down and misaligned, and yeah, I think that's part of it. Okay, anyway, let's continue on here. Okay, I found a new gate. Jump gate. Oh, it's in it. an inactive jump gate. Interesting, okay. I'm just flying kind of to the north section of Black Hole Sun here uh, to discover a couple more factories since we'll probably start trading in Argon space. That's a medical supply factory. Okay. Um, an inactive jump gate. Very interesting. Okay, so let's head back to this jump gate. And then head into this second contact to Flashpoint and then on up to Argon Prime. I'm in uh, Flashpoint Second Contact, which is an Antigone system, the one between Black Hole Sun and Argon Space. And uh, as you can see, I'm in an asteroid field and I've turned my HUD off. And I found a crystal. So if I move my uh, crosshair right on that rock there, uh, I'll put it right below and start moving towards it. You should see a twinkle appear on that rock. And that means that it has crystals. And we can go harvest those and they can be worth a lot of money. Yeah. Did you just see that twinkle there? At the top, there it goes again. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. So hopefully, well, it doesn't matter what kind of crystal it is. Some are more valuable than other, but even the, the least valuable ones are still valuable to us, especially at this point in the game. So let's head over there. Yep, there it is right there. Okay, it's a yellow crystal too, so it's not the cheapest one. Okay, so what we're going to do is... Here, 
let's try it this way. The problem is um, the asteroid is rotate or yeah, rotating. Okay, let's pull these guys in and see what they give us. These are agulite crystals. Uh, ship. Oh, those go into our own inventory. Okay, I'm still, <laughs> still trying to get used to that. Look at that, 180,000 credits right there. Nice. That's pretty decent money, man. For starting out. Hopefully we don't get caught by a pirate here. Okay, so let's... um. I'm going to just stay here for a while and keep... I'm not going to stay here forever, of course, but I'm, I'm going to stay here for a little while longer and see if we can spot another twinkle. Because that was, like, so worth it right there. Uh, I do want to be careful, though, that we don't get caught by, like, a pirate or something. Because that wouldn't be good. Um, so let's turn the HUD back off. And just kind of keep looking. Oh, is there a twinkle on that? rock right up there let's watch it yep there is okay so we found another one if we do a shift h we can also remove the hud too and then have a completely unobstructed view which is perfect for this particular scenario okay yeah there's a the purple one so that's the least expensive one but it's still worth money We have to get... We were able to target that other one. Okay, when you see the little red cloud burst, then that means you've uh, gotten all of them. Bandanite. Bandanite crystal. Named after Bandana, who was in X2. I don't think he was in X3, though. Okay, cool. Um, so if we go here, those are worth 16,000. So yeah, you can see that these Agulite ones are way more valuable, but still 16,000 credits doesn't suck. It'll help. All right, so let's see here. Just taking another quick peek a see if I see any more Twinkle Twinkles. Okay, I think there's one right here, and there's one right here. Cool. Okay, let's check this one out. We have to have our HUD on to see, see them all. And oh, they're down there. Illegal items. What's illegal? Right. Oh, we collected some um, uh, stuff that was dropped. Okay, you know what? Let's. Let's do a save. Should have actually done that after we got that, those really valuable crystals. So we'll, it'll be our second contact flashpoint save. All right, and then somewhere down here, I saw another flash, another twinkle. Uh, here, let's turn this back off for a second. Oh, did I just see a star? Behind it instead. It can be really tricky sometimes. Oh, is that it right there? Yep, that's it right there. Okay. 
The twinkles are fairly distinct. Um, it's if it's there, you're probably and you're you know paying attention. You're not going to miss it, kind of thing. Because it literally looks like a twinkling star. Okay, I think it was this asteroid right here. Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah. Okay. Our gimbals doesn't doesn't go that far. I believe we got them all. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So if we look in Mama Sentinel here. I gotta find the key for our actual inventory. So now we're up to 40,000 credits of bandonite crystals. Good, good. So yeah, this is definitely worthwhile to do. I mean, later on we'll be making millions hand over foot, but for the early game, it's uh, seems like a good way to go. Shift P is property owned. Shift I is player information. Yeah, shift I is the one we want. And it takes us right. <gasps> Excuse me, right to this screen here. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can find a few more of these before we carry on here. There's one. Okay, we are back um, at, or we are to the highway. So let's bring up the map. And what we want to do is. There's a Xenon on there. Uh, we can actually jump right on the highway from where we are. We don't even have to enter it through the gate. Please halt. We will be scanning your inventory. Uh -oh. What's it going to do? He's not telling me I have illegal stuff. Nothing found. You're free to go. Oh, uh, maybe the scans only work for what's in your cargo hold, not in your own inventory. I don't know. Anyway, um, in the larger sectors, they have these blue highways that you can just jump right onto at any point. Uh, you don't even have to go through the, the gate first. So we actually want to go this direction. There's a gate over there, though. Can we click on that? Unknown object. Um, actually, let's just fly over there really quick because I want to see what that gate is. And actually, for that matter... Jump gate. Unknown sector. Yeah, that's an unknown sector, too. We should pop through those gates just to see what's on the other side. In fact, we could even jump on this highway. Oh, wait a minute. Which direction is that going? Uh, I think that's going the wrong way. <laughs> is it? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. It gets off right over here anyway. Damn, let's just see where this takes us. Entering system. True sight. True sight. This is a parented system. Yeah, those are parented factories. Okay. Let's head back this way then. And we should be able to just get on the highway and go right through. There we go. Entering system. Second contact. Okay, let's pull off the highway because there was another jump gate over here I wanted to look at. Okay. 
Okay, let's see where this takes us. Entering system. The void. The void, huh? Okay. Isn't this a parented system too? Unknown station. One thing we can do is we can go to the encyclopedia to galaxy the void this was the first system claimed by the newly founded antigone republic after the gates realigned the inhabitants live close to a nebula which damages the hulls of ships that enter it making this system a hostile and dangerous environment in order to turn a profit the people residing here are dependent upon support from outside their own system since it is the bridge between antigone memorial and the other trade oriented communities the Antigone Republic is going above and beyond in ensuring that it is a safe and stable place despite these difficulties. So this is cool. I don't think we've looked at this yet. Oh, well, I have, but I haven't looked at it on camera with you guys. So this gives us information about the sector or if the sector has like subsectors like Grand Exchange, for example, then it gives you information about the economy. So you can kind of look at that stuff if you're interested in, you know, trading in those goods. And it tells you information about the resources it has and cool things like that and which, you know, who owns it, that sort of thing. So it looks cool. Okay, so this is, yeah, the thing is, is when the gates um, shut down and then eventually started back up, they realigned. So the old layout in X2 and X3 apparently no longer applies. I kind of sort of knew that, but now I, I'm pretty sure I know that for sure now. So, all right, cool. Let's get on back into uh, Flashpoint. Entering system, second contact. Second contact, Flashpoint. Okay, so we want to head To this gate here so we'll just jump on the highway and the highway will take us right through it okay here we go all right life is a highway life is a highway Entering system, Argon Prime. All right, we are in Argon Prime, ladies and gentlemen. This is our destination for now. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go all the way through this next gate and kind of stay on the highway for a little bit, and then we'll turn around and come back to Argon Prime just to map a few more sectors. Entering system, Atikva's choice. Oh, wow. Okay, let's hop back out then. I thought Argon Prime would have multiple sectors. Maybe it does. Maybe that one just takes us all the way through. Okay, let's go back to Argon Prime then. Hatikva's, cho uh, Hatikva's choice. What uh, faction owns that? Hatikva Free League. Mine in the shadow of a massive gas giant. This sector is the home of the Hatikva Free League, which set out during the jump gate shutdown and their subsequent realignment to find a new home for themselves settling in this sector. As a home of these settlers and to many Argon Federation citizens wishing to profit from the quickly growing economy, this sector has one of the highest populations in Argon space. Okay, so it's I guess it's in Argon space, but it's the Hatikpa Free League faction that actually owns it. Interesting. Okay. All right, let's go back to Argon Prime. Entering system, Argon Prime. Okay, let's get over by this station and then we'll hop off here.
Okay, we are in Argon Prime, you guys. This is our first time being here. This is the capital uh, sector of the Argon, and that planet there is Argon Prime. It's a beautiful Earth-like planet. Maybe someday they'll make this game so that we can actually go down onto the planets. That'll be fun. But not right now. Okay, so we're gonna have. Let's just go order to whatever this station is here. Um, and we'll dock and save. And then we're gonna sell. Argon Wharf. Um, we're gonna sell what we have to the trader to you know put a little bit more money in our pocket, and then we'll decide what the next move move is. Look at that big old tanker ship. In Carcachua, Sentinel. In Carcachua, it's an energy crater. Cool. Argon Wharf. You are near a wharf. Wharfs require a constant supply of resources to support the production of S and M sized ships. Consider deploying a satellite here to receive real time updates on the station's trade offers. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. We might just do that. There we go. We have a satellite down. So with that satellite, even if we're in, in a whole another sector, we can still get like real time information about what's happening here. Um, that might <laughs> that might not have been the best place to put it, but if it gets destroyed, it gets destroyed. Docking granted. We're home. Successfully docked. Welcome. All right, Callie, take a break. She's back in the driver's seat. She can't get enough. She can't get enough work. All right, let's go this way. Trader. Where is the trader? Is he on his coffee break? What the heck, man? Seriously? I didn't know that they went on coffee breaks. <laughs> I guess I guess they do have a shift, huh? Hmm. Well, that's cool. That's a ship being built over there. Um, all right, so... How do I know what time it is? If we go into here, does it... Tell us what time of day it is. Oh yeah, right here. Okay. So it's only it's only a little uh, quarter after two in the afternoon. So he must be on his break. It's the only thing I can think of. Okay, let's go. Trader's Corner, current location. Representative office. Let's go actually talk to the representative. Oh, what are they on break two? No, I guess we gotta go through here. Oh, this is cool. Posh office, man. Oh, you are here. You know, you got a big old forest in front of your desk. People can't see if you're there or not. Faction Representative Renda Fisty. We're not even going to go there. Let's talk to her. Um, I would like to buy a blueprint. Show me the live stream. The live stream of what? Um, okay. Guess it's just the live stream of the wharf. I'd like to buy a blueprint. Modules. We need a dock module. 
Ooh, those are spindy. Dang. Wait a minute, don't we already know that, though? Goodbye. All right. Um, show me your licenses. Federation Police License. See, if we buy this, then that means we can scan bad guys. Uh, oh, okay. The issuing faction for this license is a police authority. The issuer holds the authority over its own space. And in certain cases, over space owned by other factions. In areas for which the issuing faction has authority, pilots in possession of this license may freely scan ships in the issuing faction's name and will also receive an increased reward when destroying enemies in the vicinity of the stations that are friendly to or owned by the issuing faction. If the pilot's reputation with the issuing faction falls below the holding threshold, this license and its effects will be forfeit. All right, how do I know what? Okay, requires friend of the Federation. Ceremony, relation 10. Okay, we're only relation five, so we couldn't buy that right now even if we wanted to. Goodbye. Yep. Okay. So, I guess Goodbye. I guess that's all we can do with her right now. Does this do anything? No. Okay, let's go back to the trader. So I want to get this stuff sold. Maybe they're off their coffee break now. Nope. <laughs> they're still on break. All right. Well, guys, uh, we need to wrap up this episode. Um, I have a feeling they've gone a little too long, but we'll see how it edits out. Um, I don't know what I don't know what to do when they're gone like this. I guess um, they literally are on a break. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, save the game. Uh, let's just do that right now. Uh, so our first save in Argon Prime, and then uh, we'll we'll pick up. What I might, well, what I might do is I might let a little bit of time go by. Man, this is re really when I wish we had a set of, um, and see if this individual comes back. And then when they do, we'll start the next episode and we'll, we'll sell our stuff and make, uh, make a little bit of money and then go from there. Okay. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share the video and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.